this video we're going to explore a template model that is optimizing both the transportation routes as well as the fleet mix in terms of assets. So for example, a 53 foot truck versus a box truck. Our transportation fleet will be operating out of a distribution center at Atlanta and it will be servicing the customers in our primary market. So these are customers that are currently serviced by our operation today. We have also acquired new customers and we can see these here as a new market. So another one of the questions we want to ask is how should these new customers be optimized into the existing transportation routes with the primary customers? So let's start by taking a look at just the primary market and the current routes that we've optimized for those primary customers. We can see here that these are the different routes picking up different shipments. We can hover over any of the routes to be able to see key metrics about that route. So now let's move across into analytics and we can take a look at the detail around those routes using the transport route summary. We can see here that we've selected the scenario for the primary market. We can see how the costs break down by fixed costs, distance and time related costs, and also costs associated with the stop for each of the routes. And we can also see the total cost as well as the unit cost delivered per route. So we can see here route five actually has quite a high unit cost compared to the total route cost. So let's go and have a look at the utilization behind that route. Transport optimization supports a multiple unit of measure. So we can see the utilization of each route in terms of quantity and weight and volume. Given the nature of product within this model, we can see that it's actually volume which is the constraining capacity. So our routes and our vehicles are effectively cubing out before we reach the quantity and the weight capacity. So if we look at each of the routes, we can see that Route 1, using a 53-foot truck, is very, very well utilized. It's 100% utilized. But Route 5, where we've got that high unit cost, we can see that actually the truck utilization, the asset utilization, is below 50%. So we need to go and take a deeper look at that particular route. So on this dashboard, we can see how the stops break down across the routes. So on Route 1, we're actually servicing five customers. And we can see how the total cost of that route has been apportioned to each of those customers. We can also visualize the cost and other information to do with each of the stops. And we can see that either the very large volume stops or the stops that are furthest away from Atlanta are carrying a higher apportion cost. We can also see how the stops break down on each route by volume, by weight, and also by quantity. And so if we now filter just on Route 5, we can see that this has only got three stops and those three stops are very well concentrated around Atlanta. So if we go and we look at just Route 5 on the map, then we can see that these are the three stops and it's a very short, very poorly utilized route. That's why the relative unit cost is, is quite high. So a quick question here would be, should we be using a different type of transportation asset? Should we have a smaller transportation asset in the fleet? So now let's take a look at the new market customers. And we can see if we move to scenario two, we are looking at the route just to service those new market customers. And then in scenario three, we've looked at routing both the primary and the new market customers, but we've still routed these completely independently. And we haven't looked at combining both markets into optimal routes. So this effectively really is our baseline for both the primary and the new market customers. So for scenario three, we've used the relationship constraint. And we're saying that the primary market, which is a customer group, isn't compatible with the secondary market, which is a different customer group. So these two sets of customers will be treated independently when the routes are optimized for scenario three. And of course, relationship constraints can be used to represent all sorts of different things like product compatibility on a vehicle. Um, frozen product can't go on an ambient vehicle. Vehicle access type compatibility at a customer. There may be restrictions due to access, for example. And then in scenario four, we're looking at combining these markets. So now we're looking at the optimized transportation routes, considering both the primary and the new market customers. So now's a good time to go back to analytics and actually start comparing those scenarios against each other. We can do that in the transportation scenario comparison dashboard. So we can see how the costs compare across the scenarios, and we can see how those scenario costs break down into fixed cost, 
costs associated with time and distance, and also the stops on the route. But we can also see here direct costs. So transportation optimization will also be considering LTL and parcel carriers. So it might be that instead of putting a shipment onto one of the routes, it's better to send a shipment through an LTL network. And if that happens, we'll see that cost here as the direct costs. And then we can also see the comparison of total and unit cost across the scenarios. So scenario one is looking at just our primary customers. And scenario two is looking at routing just the secondary customers. And scenario three is effectively our baseline. It's the sum of scenario one and two, and it's looking at routing both of those customer sets, but keeping them completely independent. So we can compare scenario three to scenario four, where we've combined those markets and generated an optimal set of routes across both customer sets. And we can see here that this has given us about a 25% cost reduction in terms of our transportation costs. And we can see that means the unit cost has come down from 7.57 to 5.66. So now let's take a look at some of the route information for the combined market scenario. And let's look at the volume utilization of the assets. And we can see that we've got a much better utilization of that 53 foot truck asset across all of the routes with the utilization for Route 5 being just 47%, and that's now significantly increased to 91%. And if we look at the detail of the stops on those routes, we can also see that the number of stops has increased on Route 5. So this is a great example of understanding the detail of what's driving that 25% cost reduction in those optimized routes. So the optimum routes that we've been analyzing are all underpinned by time and distances from a road network. So we can see here we have a transit matrix table. This is from every origin to every destination. We can provide a transportation distance and a transportation time. Now this data can either be imported if you already have it, or you can use a utility to look this data up from providers like Mapbox or PC Miler. So this transportation matrix has been populated from PC Miler. And we can see that if we go from customer one to customer two, then the distance and the time is actually a little less than if we go in the opposite direction from customer two to customer one. So we can represent this really detailed time and distance road network data where it's important for the project. So now let's take a look at some more advanced scenarios. If we move to scenario five, this represents the current fixed routes for the primary market. And we're optimizing the new customers in the new market onto those fixed routes. So this scenario allows us to understand the cost of minimizing the implementation and minimizing the impact to the existing primary market customers by keeping the routes in place and then simply optimizing those new customers into existing routes. So for this scenario, we've represented the existing six routes in the template routes table. And we can define rules around how the new market customers can be inserted. Here we're going to allow them to be inserted anywhere on the existing routes. And then in the shipments table, we can fix a particular shipment to a route and also a stop sequence. So we can see here that this shipment to customer one must be on route one and it must be the first drop. So let's compare scenario five where we're keeping the primary routes fixed to scenario four where we're optimizing both of the customer sets onto optimal routes. And we can see here that the cost increase is about 18% and our unit cost is 5.66. That increases to 6.89. So this has quantified the cost of minimizing disruption to the existing primary market, as well as minimizing implementation effort. Now let's take a look at scenario six, where we've introduced a new asset type. So in addition to the 53 foot truck of Atlanta, we now have a box truck and we can see that that has a different fixed and variable cost operating profile. And we can also see in terms of capacity, its volume in cubic feet is less and it's able to carry less weight in terms of pounds. So now let's take a look at those routes for scenario six on the map. You can see they actually look quite different. If we zoom into Atlanta, we can actually see that there are more shorter routes when compared to scenario four. In scenario four, we have less larger routes. And so let's now compare scenario six to scenario four. 
And we can see that the operating cost has actually reduced a little. It's come down from 5.66 as a unit cost for the combined markets. And it goes down to 5.41 where we introduce that additional asset type. And we can also see here what the fleet mix looks like. So we've actually gone from six 53 foot trucks to 10 assets in total, five 53 foot trucks and five box trucks. And now let's take a look at the asset utilization on those routes for the fleet mix optimization scenario. And we can see the fleet mix of 53 foot truck and box truck and which route they're operated on. And we can see that this new asset type is pretty well utilized. It's only when we get down to route nine that we can see the utilization is just 50%. So finally, in scenario seven, we've introduced a new depot at Jacksonville. And we've only permitted the 53 foot truck to keep this consistent with scenario four for comparison purposes. Now, transportation optimization won't optimize the distribution boundaries. So in the shipments table, we've specified which customers we want to be sourced from that new depot. Obviously, you could use network optimization to be able to optimize those distribution boundaries. So let's go back to the map and take a look at the routes for scenario seven. We can see here that Jacksonville's come online and this is what the route to those customers looks like from that depot. So we can now compare scenario seven where we're using that alternate sourcing facility at Jacksonville to scenario four. And we can see that in scenario four where we're combining all of the customers onto optimal routes from Atlanta, our unit cost is 5.66. And we get a very marginal cost reduction if we use Jacksonville. So this really identifies the fact that there's not a significant cost saving to be gained from using that alternate sourcing facility. And so to summarize, we looked at the current primary market routes and then what would happen if we independently serviced our new market customers. We then combined those customers onto optimal routes. We then ran a scenario to understand if we maintain the primary route structure and optimized the new market customers into the existing routes, what the implications would be. We then tested the fleet mix and we introduced a box truck. And then finally, we explored an alternative sourcing facility at Jacksonville.